Well, we wrote the book, uh, Dr. Elias and I, because genetics is a fast-moving subject. It's being applied in many different clinical aspects. And the average consumer, the average patient, just doesn't know enough to decide whether or not they want to get their genome screened, for example, or try to find whether they're carrying a mutation that might have major medical impact on them or their family. I mean, the question about testing uh, newborns or fetuses uh, for late onset diseases is, is a pretty interesting one. I mean, basically all you can do, uh, we're talking about diseases that don't have treatments, all you can do is label your child, stigmatize your child, and discriminate against your child. And there's nothing that can be done. Hopefully by the time the child is 50, that's 50 years from now, uh, we may have some cures, and then, then it will make sense for the child to know about it. But other than that, you're just trying to look at the future and say, this is, a, this is what I want to concentrate on, this disease. Whereas, who knows? We don't know the future, and, and we don't know the influence of the environment, and we don't know what might even survive and get, die of something else. It seems to be a, kind of a false waste of time. Yeah, for Dr. Elias and I, the, uh, the two big issues with genomics is whether it's going to impact privacy and impact the doctor-patient relationship and informed consent. And privacy is, uh, is simply uh, having other people find out information about you that you consider private, that's always been considered private, and that you might be uh, embarrassed, discriminated against, or, or just don't want other people to know about it. And genomic information, you know, what's in your genome that's not evident by looking at you, uh, is classic private information. In fact, we even call it genetic privacy, a special kind of privacy. And we don't think that anyone should have their genome sequenced and certainly not stored in a public bank or even in a private bank without their informed consent. So that's the key, is that uh, there's no problem doing all this with consent, but on the other hand, it's hard to know whether you can give informed consent unless you know something about genomics, what they might find, and how it could be used, not just for you, but against you and your family. We're debating that right now. I mean, there's just two levels of this. One, one is, of course, everybody agrees you have to consent to have your genome put in, like the Obama Bank or, or the Precision Medicine Bank. Uh, but the, the debate now is about, okay, once we have this bank made up of this million people and million genomes, and we want to do research with this genome, of course, that's the only reason you do this bank, right? Uh, do you have to go back and ask every time you come up with a new research project, do you have to say, well, can I do, can I do this research on, on cancer? Can I do this research on mental illness? Can I do this research on that? And the current thought is that if the people going in know what the bank is for and know kind of a menu of different types of research we're thinking of doing now, that they could give what's called broad consent. They can say, I consent to have you hold my DNA and do research like this on it without you coming back and getting, getting an additional consent from me. And surprisingly to a lot of people, Dr. Elias, and I think that's okay, uh, as long as it is spelled out and as long as you retain the right to withdraw your, your sample from the project altogether if you become uncomfortable with what's going on. Well, right now, I mean, this only happens when you're using in vitro fertilization and you have the embryo outside of, of the woman, obviously. And when it's in the laboratory, right now we can screen it for genetic diseases. Uh, we can uh, screen it and do uh, for gender. So you can decide whether to have a boy or a girl if you're doing IVF in any event. Uh, what we can't do that's done in Gattaca, which is goes a step beyond screening, is actually change the embryo. Is uh, you may remember in Gattaca, the the, the uh, doctor said, "Well, we've eliminated premature baldness, alcoholism, aggression." Okay, great. Uh, we, we might want to do those. We may never be able to understand the genetic basis of any of those things. Uh, but there is now just you know, actually since the book was published. Uh, a new gene editing technique that has been used on embryos, although not embryos that are destined to become fetuses, but embryos in, in the laboratory, uh, that is able to make genetic alterations. And the, the international debate now is whether that research should go forward with humans or whether that should just be limited to animals. So, so Gattaca, even though it seems weird and, and out there, uh, is an excellent vehicle, I think, to, uh, to spur that discussion. And, and, 
for us to try to decide. So I don't think any individual doctor should be able to decide that. I think we have to decide as a society whether we want to even go in that direction at all.